Welcome to a very special festive edition of the Music Live podcast on the BBC World Service. I'm Karen Marie Oestel, better known as Danish singer songwriter Moog. Music Live is a show where artists from around the world get together to discuss all aspects of our lives in music. A new podcast episode is released every Friday, ahead of being broadcast on the World Service on Saturdays and Sundays. So please subscribe to the show wherever you get your podcasts. If you like this episode, make sure you rate and review the show. I want to hear what you think. You can also find loads of other great episodes at the website, featuring everyone from international pop sensation Sarah Lawson to actual Spice Girl Melanie C, to one of Sweden's best-selling artists Darren, to internet singer-turned-pop star Dodi. Whatever kind of music you're into, there's an episode for you. Plus, there are playlists for every kind of mood curated by artists from the show. Head to bbcworldservice.com forward slash music life. For today's holiday special, I'm joined by Sigrid, Tovlo and Alma. I'll be talking about working during the holiday season, whether we follow specific criteria when songwriting and why Scandinavians are so good at making pop music. All right, let's get into it. Hello. Hey. See you. Good to see you too. Wait, I'm gonna actually pull up Zoom so I can see you. <laughs> right, right. Hey, can you hear me? Hey. hey. Again. How are you? Uh, I'm good. How are you? Where are you? I'm in LA. I'm in oh. my um, writing room. Oh, nice. Beautiful. House. Nice. Hi, mm. Secret. Ooh. Hello. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Wait. The, seems like the input's really low. This might get better now. Is that up? I'm Kan Marie Oestel, better known as Danish singer and songwriter Mö. I would probably describe my sound as somewhere in the realm of alternative pop, but I like to blend elements of different genres. I like to mix electronica, soul, indie and pop music. I grew up listening to punk music and that's definitely something that has influenced my music throughout my career. But I think my real breakthrough moment to like the mainstream was when I did this song called Lean On with Major Lazer and DJ Snake. That song became a global hit. And then since then, I've been releasing my own music and doing other collaborations with the likes of Charlie XCX, who's my absolute favorite, Justin Bieber and Jack Antonoff. And I've done support tours with artists, including Years and Years, Luna George, Sia. I'm just about to release my third album called Motodrome, which I wrote back in Denmark during lockdown. Getting Festi with me today are three incredibly talented Scandinavian artists who have earned themselves worthy spots in pop superstardom. First up, it's a Norwegian singer and songwriter who has become one of the most loved names in contemporary pop. In 2017, she released her debut EP, Don't Kill My Vibe, which saw her crowned winner of the UK's BBC Sound of 2018 poll. The following year, she released her debut album, Sucker Punch, to critical acclaim. She has toured with the likes of Maroon 5 and George Ezra, and her latest single, Burning Bridges, is a taste of what's to come for her second album. It's Secret! Hello! How are you doing? I'm good! I'm a little stressed. I was stuck in traffic, but I'm really excited to be here with you guys. Really cozy. Yeah, same. Seriously, it's so nice to be together with all of you. It's such a privilege. And Secret, what have you been up to lately? I've just released a Christmas song. <laughs> yes, I've heard it. It's a total Christmas banger. Next up is a singer and songwriter who has been dubbed Sweden's darkest pop export. Known for her grunge-infused pop sound, she has released four albums and had global success with tracks like Habits, 
Cool Girl, and the Grammy-nominated Glad He's Gone. She has collaborated with artists such as Coldplay, Kylie Minogue, and Nick Jonas, and played on international stages with Katy Perry and Maroon 5. Beyond her own music, she co-wrote Lord's Homemade Dynamite and Ellie Goulding's Grammy-nominated Love Me Like You Do. It's Tove Lo. How are you doing? I'm good. I'm in LA at the moment where I live nowadays. And yeah, just in the studio a lot, making my fifth album, which feels kind of crazy. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And yeah, I'm going to start putting out music and start touring again next year, finally. So I'm ready. Finally, a singer-songwriter who went from performing on Finnish talent show Idols to achieving platinum-selling singles in just five years. She shot to fame in 2017 with the release of Chasing Highs. She released her debut album Have You Seen Her in 2020 and has collaborated with the likes of Charlie XCX, Tovlo and myself. Beyond her own music, she has written for pop heavyweights like Miley Cyrus and Ariana Grande. It's the unstoppable Alma. Yes. <laughs> it's so good to see you again. I've been missing you. I know. I've literally been missing you too. What have you been up to? Like you're, you're writing, are you writing for your own music or for others or both? Yes. When this corona happened, I went to Sweden for the first time for a long time. And then I clicked with a couple people there. Yeah, I started working on the best music I've ever made. So nice. it's, it's been very fun. I'm chasing high. What about like this holidays food and like drinks, like stuff you drink? Do you have like a speciality? Glug. Glug. Oh yeah, glug. 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 Yeah. Oh, how can I forget glug? Glug. glug. We say gluggy. Gluggy. Glug oh, that's nice. Gluggy. Oh, this is fun. Okay, <laughs> Norway is glug. Finland is gluggy. Denmark. Glug. Sverige. And what about Sweden? Glug. Yeah. Okay, okay, so we just have to do it our own way. <laughs> I love that. So we actually, all our countries have gluck. Yeah. yeah, of course. Oh, amazing. So it's, I, it's a oh. common, like, cold climate thing, I feel like. I, yeah. that's, my fa- mm-hmm. that's my favorite. I will actually go to Ikea in LA to buy gluck. They have Ikea in LA? Yeah, it's the best. Yes. I go there to buy <laughs> uh, gingerbread, co- uh, pepper cockle, the gingerbread yes. cookies. I go to the buy like everything, sp- like lingonberry jam, like everything specifically yes, Swedish so or probably, Love you know, Nordic <laughs> or Scandinavian. But I, I, li- I went there once when I hadn't been home in a really long time. And Charlie... My boyfriend was like filming me laughing because I was actually getting emotional in Ikea because I was <laughs> oh like, my God. and it was like around that. the holiday time. I was like, <laughs> and they have like little calendars, you know, that you open with chocolates yeah. in them and oh, and the gingerbread cookies and this. And he's like, are you seriously crying in Ikea for a Swedish holiday stuff? Oh, like, I love that. I had yes. the same. <laughs> same. I had the same thing. I was in Asia and I was so lonely mm. and I went to Ikea. I don't know. It smelled the same. It, no, it, it, it was so weird. Sense. It's kind of creepy actually, but... <laughs> Yeah. yeah, but it's so close to Finland. So I was like, this is almost my home. Yeah, no, but it makes so much sense. Like, I also feel like when, when you travel a lot and like if you've been away from your fans, uh, not your fans, but your friends for a long time, yeah. <laughs> those little things of similarities, like even I think also sometimes just meeting people from Scandinavia, yeah. it's just like, oh, yeah. it feels like familiar. It's just, I think for me, so like, oh. No, yeah, for sure. Same. I almost started crying in a writing session yesterday because there was a Danish technician there. And he's oh, talking oh Danish. God. I was like, don't. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's so nice. So but cute. you, Secret, you're in you're in uh, London now, right? Yeah, yeah. Have you have you been there for a long time? Mm, for a few weeks now. Okay. Promo. Then concert. it makes sense that you would be crying when you nice. met a Danish person. I just yeah. <laughs> it doesn't take long before I get homesick. Yeah, yeah. I know the feeling. Yeah. 
during the holiday season. I feel like that's the only time a year that the music industry for real closes down. Yeah. And how for you guys, like in, in the past, how has that, that period of time, do you rewind or do you write music? Can you even rewind? You work all year, like just work, work, work. And then the holidays come and it's like, oh, time to relax. But then it's just like, no, I don't know how to relax. Let's just write some more. I don't know. What's your experience, Alma? I'm the best when it comes to relaxing. So oh, like, for real, uh, <laughs> Nordic. The, the first minute when I land back home and I know it's Christmas, I'm like, I'm off. Oh my like God, my manager, give me some no, tips. I don't reply to anyone. I don't do social media. I'm just good, home. Alma. That's you good. are my hero. And I love you. Mm. I worship you. I know it's like such a privileged thing to have. But yeah, how about you guys? What? A question like, how do you do that? How do you just not? I don't know. Do I don't know. Home? That's that's the crazy thing about me because I I get super stressed. I worry about a lot of things, but then when I'm home, I don't know. It's probably because there is my mates that I haven't seen for a while, and mm. they're we just talk about different stuff, and I just forget that I'm an artist and I have a career because you know Finland that is pretty so easy because nice. they're. There is no competition. Like I don't see art, like international artists here. There's not gonna be a party that I have to go or a artist that I have to write with or a producer. Mm -hmm. It's just me and a lot of Finnish yeah. artists. So I think it's probably because that. If I would live in LA or London or Sweden, I would probably it would be harder, mm. I guess. Because it's always uh, available to you, kind of. To yeah, work. exactly. Yeah. yeah, yeah. When I'm home, I'm home. I'm not. I, yeah. That makes sense. Yeah, But what about yeah. you, Tove? Are you celebrating in Sweden or are you going to say in... in uh, My like... family always grown up celebrating Christmas and, you know, but like uh, yeah. any of the holidays, yeah. it's never been that important to me. Like I used to work no. on Christmas Eve because it was better money, okay. like, you know, yeah. before I was uh, had my artist career. But now I'm like, I can't wait to go home for the, for the, see the snow. I haven't had a, a white yeah. Christmas in so long. So oh, this, yes. but I'm actually going home for Christmas this year with, yeah, with my whole family. And oh, so nice. that's going to be really nice. And it's apparently snowing nice. in Stockholm right now. So I'm excited. But we've all, we've had like since pretty much since me, my brother moved out of my parents home it's like we don't do Christmas presents but this yeah. year my parents were like we want to give Christmas presents this year and I was like oh no so now I'm like uh, trying to uh, figure out what to give yeah. them but it can um, be quite it's going to be really nice yeah yeah <laughs> so now like for instance do you plan to work during the holiday or do you just plan to relax chill out well I will be oh yeah sorry that was the question no I lose sorry. my it... train of thought a lot so you can like I do the same steer the same. me like That wasn't the question. If I <laughs> so, the reason I'm going home is because the movie, the first movie that I'm a part of, uh, oh, yeah, in Sweden called The Emigrants. Oh my god! They have yeah, a, I... yeah, with the Norwegian directors. <laughs> no way! Who? Ooh. Erik Poppe. Nice. Erik Poppe. Mm -hmm. How cool! So I'm actually going home, and okay. I'm doing a lot of promo in Stockholm and Gothenburg, and then I'll have Christmas with my family, and then some more promo, and then I'm going back. So this year working year but not always i try to be off during during the holidays yeah okay awesome mm. what about you secret i mean i come from a very small town in norway so again yeah, what, what is it all yeah it's nice Olesund. so nice ah, beautiful place. place it's so nice it's really beautiful mm. but i think it's the same as you say Alma. when you get home you just get into this different zone and i think for me it's my family yeah. that drags me out yeah. of it Because they're like, you're yes. going to be there for dinner, so get off your yeah. phone. It's They're very... <laughs> that's nice. Yeah, we're ve we are very like holiday people, just because that's the only time my siblings come home. Because my brother has lived in the UK, my sister lives in Spain, in Madrid. Ah, so you all spread out, but then hmm. the holiday season is really the place where it's like, ah. Oh. That's nice. Yeah, but it's like super intense. I feel like I go from sure. one intense thing <laughs> to another. It's great, but you know, of course. it's, it's yeah, family. No, yeah. It's family, exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And what about you? Oh, yeah. Well, me, I, I, mm -hmm. I think, as I said before, like for me, usually during Christmas, it used to be the only time of year where I felt like I was off. But then I usually just felt that it was actually hard to just go from 100 to a zero. But it's something I feel like I'm starting now to learn, at least for me, the importance of taking breaks, you know, during a year, like to have periods of time where you're off. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. I love working. I'm definitely a workaholic. I, you know, I feel so lucky to have this kind of job, but I need to have those little pockets of time where you 
as Alma, you were saying, like, were you just being super normal human, hanging out with your friends, old friends, yeah. you know, Tove? I think also when you do something creative, that the creative brain never really shuts off, right? I feel like you're always kind of a little yeah. bit in a sort That's of... That's true. Uh, and, and then when, you know, being an artist thinks all of a sudden so many things are a part of your life that's got nothing to do with creativity, then it actually feels yeah. like mm -hmm. work. That's so true. Mm. Yeah. Oh my God. Yeah, exactly. So to nourish your creative side, you need to sort of have breaks where you're not thinking about the work part of it or like where you just, yeah, it refuels yeah. your creative mm. yeah. energy, I think. I think that's so true. What about you, Secret? I felt like at the my most busy that those breaks have just been uh, restitution. Yeah. More than, mm -hmm. what can I say, yeah. like meaningful time off? Because yeah. Because you're so yeah. tired. Yeah, yeah. I, I can totally relate to that. Yeah. And you just lay on the couch like this and you're like, I can't go yeah. outside. I just don't want yeah. to see anyone. Yeah. And only, exactly. Yeah. It's only for your body, but then not your, like you're mm -hmm. mentally mm -hmm. somewhere yeah. else still. Mm -hmm. You have to yeah. have like a break break. Mm. No, because yeah, I, I feel like the same, like break. for me for years, yeah. like when I took break, it would be like just like lying on the couch and getting like sick and just being like, oh, I'm, you know, just really feeling like just so worn out. And I really want to get to that point, like Tobe, kind of like you were saying, where it's like when you go on a break, you can still nurture the creative spirit and like, you know, do stuff that is creative, but isn't about yeah the business and about the Moo brand, you know, like, but exactly. where you just kind of like, mm. it doesn't have to become anything. You just sing because exactly. it's fun to sing. Like I, I had this yeah. moment, I was like, I used to walk around and sing all the time. And then once I got, you know, everything was kind of taken off for me. And like, I had so many problems mm. with my voice. Same, I just stopped same, same. singing. Then I was like, I used to love yeah. to sing. <laughs> and so yeah. now I try to like sit, I mean, I can't play piano, but I try to like, you know, get through it. And I just like kind of sit and play songs that I like just to feel good singing and not like, it doesn't have to have, to have a purpose. It's just for me yeah. feeling good. <laughs> yeah, good it's crazy. Sometimes you forget how much there is like mm. all the other stuff mm. and than singing mm -hmm. like promo and songwriting but like singing especially like these two years when we haven't got a chance to play shows mm -hmm. it's like i actually bought a guitar too oh, and amazing. i started learning just just mm. because i wanted to sing and i didn't want to be to you know I didn't want to do like YouTube karaoke <laughs> all the time. Like I wanted to sing with a, and I, no, yeah. So oh, I, no. like a oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's Those nice, nice. Cool. <laughs> when you're drunk, but like not in like in the morning when you just yeah. want to sing yeah. or something like that. Yeah. Do you guys sing with your families during the holidays? Like, are your guys' no. families musical? Around the Christmas tree. <laughs> Around the yeah. Christmas tree. No. Really? <laughs> you do the full yeah, dance? Yeah, we do that. Do yeah. you do that? <laughs> yeah. Oh my God. And every year my parents, they're so, everyone's so disappointing with me because I haven't practiced the Christmas songs because I'm yeah. the one who has to play so the piano. And every year I'm like, sorry, oh my God. God. It's exactly the same with me. It's the same with me. They're like, oh, you're a musician. You yeah, live from being a musician. Real. Why can't you play the piano and play us all these Christmas tunes? And I'm like, I'm out of practice, guys. Like, I don't. Yes. It's like request to the DJ. <laughs> yeah. And it's like, don't, don't yeah. no okay. requests, please. Oh my God. I'm so jealous. My mom hates like Christmas songs, so it's like I have to force that we can even like listen to uh, Christmas songs. It's like, yeah, when I was younger, there was never that's, even that's Christmas songs. Now I play like Justin Bieber Christmas album every year. I just like Does force Justin it. Bieber has a Christmas album? Oh my God, it's the oh best. Oh my God, I can't believe You're I haven't missing out. heard about that. It's amazing. Well, at least I know what to listen to this year. My parents only want to listen to classical music and I'm like, Sorry, we're going to throw some Bieber in there because otherwise yes. <laughs> it's not. Amazing. It's actually a very, very good album. Like it, he right. sings so well. I love the Mariah him. Carey ones. Yeah. Like I'm just such a it's big Mariah Carey fan. I love her whole nuts. Christmas fantasy. It's yeah. just, I mean. Yeah, of course. Old school. Classics. Yeah. <laughs> You're listening to the BBC World Service and this is a special holiday edition of Music Life. I'm Kan marie Oestel, better known as Danish singer-songwriter Moog. Joined by Norwegian singer-songwriter Secret, Swedish grunge pop heavyweight Tovlo and rising pop talent Alma. Regarding songwriting, what is for you the best criteria of writing music? Alone, like with people, do you like it when it's kind of stressed and it's like fast or do you like when it's like, oh, we have plenty of time and it's just like to focus and dive into it? Tov. I definitely go through periods of just, I think if I've had a long period of touring and then I'm supposed to get back in the studio, I, I rather yeah. start alone and just like write kind of my own ideas. Yeah. And then 
go in with people. But then I have, by this point, I have people that I worked for so long with, like Ludwig, you know, I mean, all the guys and girls and wolf cousins mm. that I've uh, yeah. worked with for so many years. I can go in with any of them and just be like, I don't know, man. Like, I feel, I don't feel insecure about just throwing out whatever is in my head. That is the best. Yeah, and I think I do have an issue with the sort of LA writing way where everyone's just stressing to get the song done mm, in one day. Mm, you know, yeah. I'm like, mm, you know, I kind of want to like ponder it for about three weeks <laughs> and then we can like it. Yeah. But I'm very, I'm not very fast. Yeah. Once I find the concept and find what I want to write about, maybe like I can get it all done in a day, but I need to sort of yeah. turn over a few more stones before... I'm like settled in like, that's it. Let's go to mix, you know? Yeah, yeah. no, yeah. same. And I can't be too many people in a session. You know, sometimes when you work here and it's like, you're like seven people in the room. And I'm like, oh, no, where yeah. are all these humans yeah. that just showed up? To? And I feel like you can make three different songs. Then. Yeah, I get confused. I can't concentrate. I get irritated. I get like, Shh. oh my God, same. <laughs> yeah, it's just like yeah. my song. <laughs> yes. Oh my God, I, I could definitely mm -hmm. feel that. And you don't want to be like a diva. No. But then if there is too many leaders in the room, mm -hmm. it, it gets yeah, frustrated. So it can work if you're that many. If yeah. everyone respects like, okay, let's let this yeah, person exactly. take the lead and then you just try to feed them ideas. Yeah. But if it's exactly uh, everyone mm -hmm. is only caring about their own idea, yeah. it gets really <laughs> Ooh, hard. Yeah. And it gets very yeah. difficult. Alma. Yeah, yeah. then the like the studio space has to be big. So we have space. And yeah. I don't know. I, I just like seven. It's a lot of pressure as well when you put yeah. that many people in a room. Yeah. As you say, because you need a big space. I don't know. I have yeah. a thing with big studios can creep yeah. me out a bit. <laughs> yeah, same. They, if it's they too nice, it is too big. I don't know. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. They Guess make us. it. They they make it too professional. I feel like. Mm -hmm. mm. Yeah, it's serious. Only serious yeah. music. I think for yeah. me, I can really oh, relate I, I to that thing that Toby you were just saying, like that thing of like having a little time for yourself to find out what the concepts are, like what the things you want to write about and talk about is before getting into a room mm. with people, whether it's like your friends or new people. Like I think just that thing of really knowing exactly. what it is that you want to say and like have a little moment to just digest it. Because I've tried that thing where you go yeah. from session to session and it's like, lost all sense of concept and direction and just like let's just rah, write something you know and, yeah. and that's always when i start feeling yeah, just lost i guess yeah and then some okay. some dude with a confidence like i know what you're gonna say i <laughs> yeah. have the song for you i have the song you need and you're like you're so tired yeah. you're like oh god cool yeah let's yeah, let's write about what you want to yeah. write about i don't <laughs> true <laughs> that's oh my god but totally you can be the artist then. <laughs> Alma. no i definitely share the same same feeling because I've had so much time. I feel like I have so many ideas and I literally, every time when I sit down and somebody plays a beat or a guitar, I'm like, okay, let's go. I've mm, been pretty nice. fast, but then it takes time to get the production right yeah. and little things. Oh, production. And, yeah. But yeah. like writing at this moment, I'm, I'm pretty fast because there's just so many things. I'm very inspired. Secret, what about you? Do you write alone or do you prefer to work with a team or like with different people or what's your dream? Yeah, thing? I hum a lot. I was speaking of like if we like, like sing at home and stuff, I always walk around singing and humming. Um, but I don't like to write alone. I get too yeah. self-critical. I also yeah, in I, your I'm, head. Yeah. I get so easily distracted. I'll find something else that needs mm. to be done. So I need to go to an office. Yeah proper Makes sense. get in there <laughs> yeah. have a coffee yeah. then my last record was written very in a hurry it was like everything was like demo a lot of it was like demo vocals yeah. oh, okay we can mix it fix it in the mix fix it yeah. in production one yeah. day on to the next and then pandemic happened and then yeah. this new era wink uh yeah. the new music <laughs> <laughs> so me mm. and karen we met in Copenhagen Yeah, in the pandemic. It was nice. It was yeah. really nice because I was there writing my new music with Danish producer Sly, yeah. and Norwegian writer Caroline Aylin. Oh, yes. I love Sly and Caroline. Love. It was first time in a really long time, at least, that I'd work with like cohesive yeah. couple. <laughs> couple for the first yeah. time. But then we had like, it was just us, three yeah. people making everything. And I was staying in the same hotel at the edge of the water. It was really nice. And I walked nice. to the same studio. And it was like, Caroline would like bake a bolle, like, no, yeah, yeah. like uh, buns. <laughs> yeah, 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 it was full on. She's the best. And it was like, hey guys, come I with the buns. That. Write the song. We talk about it. It was like, don't worry about it. We'll revisit. We'll come back tomorrow or in two weeks. Such a chill process. It sounds like such a good and just focused process and way of doing it. 
it was such a different thing yeah. and like we went swimming in between riding which was so nice go back in ride a bit more oh, but i think you need a little bit of both like that was an amazing time and yeah i'll yeah. cherish it forever um yeah but it's good to be busy <laughs> you learn a lot from those like intense mm. sessions like that when it's like all new people it's like you kind of have to learn what you love and to sort of push for yeah. what you want yeah. in a way to stand up for yourself in a way if everyone's singing over you and not listening you have to be like no this is what i yeah. want and it's kind of yeah. a good builds you as a rider i think in a yeah. lot of ways as well i think you're right too even though it's not my preferred yes. way to work it's like no. good to be able to handle those yeah. situations uh, I, i really agree with but, that yeah and it can they can open doors as well if you meet per people for the first time and i yeah i think i'm a bit obsessed with that yeah energy that can happen when the first time you meet someone and it's like oh we yes. listen to the same bands ah oh. yeah yeah Just that's that's true i love that yeah and it is good it, it is a good way to click with new people if you like because yeah. if you click in that situation you're like oh we got something special we should keep making yeah. music yeah <laughs> no one i feel like we meet so many people label people and people that are not actually making music so it's like so special when you're like oh my god i love this band and we've been listening mm -hmm. to this and blah blah blah. it's yeah it's, yeah i love it yeah i remember that with Stai. that was such a coincidence we both were like you like rock he was yeah like, do you and i was like what <laughs> yeah those things yeah. that you wouldn't necessarily <laughs> connect <laughs> i guess yeah. Mm. yeah and then they tell you their bands that they listen to and you're like oh my god i love this and yeah. you get new music yeah which is that's always my nice. favorite thing with the always. scandi or nordic producers especially mm. the swedish ones they always listen to much harder music and then mm. they like make amazing pop music. yeah that's so true so cool yes. love it it's like have you heard my punk metal yeah. band that i used to so have nice. in high school yeah. and it's like <laughs> yeah everyone literally oh, everyone yeah. but that's actually also a good lead-in for my last question which is because okay i always get asked why scandinavian people make such good pop music and i never know what to answer to that like because i think it's a very abstract question in a way but i'm also like i understand yeah. why they ask but do you get asked the same and what's your response yeah. to it What's in the water over there? Oh. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, oh yeah, my God. Exactly. We like yeah. melodies. It's our second language. No, that's true. Yeah. 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 Um, I always think it's about Abba. Because, yeah, you know, true. I don't know any other thing. No, that started. Yeah, it started everything. And I feel like at least Abba has been influencing me a lot, even though I, I wasn't really listening to Abba, but still. Sometimes I think about is it because all of our languages are very melodic it kind mm. of goes a lot up and down it's you know it's kind mm -hmm. of um uh, at least that's what yeah, i've been told i've, I've heard about this about theory it. as well <laughs> yeah. it makes sense i think at least sweden it's like yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah yeah but then i'm wondering if too it's like <laughs> english being the second language it's like when you write lyrics and stuff you can't it's like you focus almost more about that it doesn't have to be that yeah. complicated yeah the simplicity True. i think is a big it's a big thing you're saying it as it is yeah exactly It's more blunt. I was think like the thing that I sometimes thought about was like maybe it's because Scandinavian countries are really rich countries, so we have time to kind of mm. like practice our hobbies because we don't live yeah. to survive but live also to live. True. Probably that too. You can choose to focus on something creative very exactly. early in your life, and it's like you know, and then it's kind of paid for you to keep exactly. studying and keep learning. Which is it. such a privilege. Um, yeah, and I don't know and, about yeah. you guys, but at least in Finland, like music, uh, like they teach, we have to learn music in school. Yeah. Like pretty much, we have to learn how to play a couple mm. different instruments, and you know, it's like forced for everyone. So I don't know. Uh, that's probably one reason too that we have pretty good yeah. schools and yeah. music is I, yes. part of it. What about you, Secret? And also because mm. maybe I don't know how this is in your countries, but in Norway it's like very spread out as well. Like the whole politics of Norway is yeah. that you should have the same offers wherever you live. So where I come from, super small town, we still had a music school yeah. you could go to after school, dancing, theater. Yeah, supposed to be there for everyone. We're so lucky. Yeah. Yeah, but then again. We yeah. might just have like magic in us. Yeah, there might be something in the water, right? It's clean. <laughs> yeah, there might be something in the air and there water. Actually, maybe the answer is just that there's something in the water. <laughs> Thanks so much to my guests this week, Secret, Toblo and Alma. And thanks to you for listening. I'm Moo. 
Head to the website for more music live shows, bbcworldservice.com forward slash music live. Before we go, do you have any projects out now or coming up that you'd like to tell us about? Where can people find your music? Secret. Uh, I'll be busy. I'll be <laughs> going on tour. Very exciting. There will be music released. Beautiful. Yeah, that's kind of, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's what I can say, at least. And Tob, what about you? I will be wrapping up my album early next Amazing. year. I finally figured out the album title yesterday. Oh, wow, congratulations. So I was celebrating a little yesterday. Thank you. I cannot share yet, but I will share soon. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, so start to put out music really soon, early next year. I'm so, so excited. Nice. Wait, Alma, what yeah. about you? What do you have in store for us? I'm gonna wrap up an album that I'm making now, early next year, and then releasing stuff, some shows. We've been filming some stuff, but it's it's been very exciting. The next year is gonna be fun. Yeah. On January 28th, I have my third album, Motodrome, coming out, which will include singles like Live to Survive, Brad Pitt, Kindness. And I also, I hope I'll get to see you all in yes. person soon. Yes. 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 Next yeah, year. Was, we have yeah, to. Next year. Next year when we're all putting out music. Somewhere. We'll Somewhere. Thank you so much. It was so nice to see so you. So nice Thank to chat to you guys. You Perfect. Thank, Thank you, guys. You. Bye. Bye. <laughs> Remember to subscribe, rate, and review the show wherever you get your podcasts. There's another Music Live podcast coming your way same time next week. And here's what is coming up. I'm Laura Lee, the bassist from the Texas-based band Crumbin. And I will be your host on next week's episode of Music Life on the BBC World Service. I'll be joined by DJ and TikTok famous bass player Blue to Tiger, bassist and Mark Benevento band member Karina Reichman, and singer-songwriter, bassist and producer Adeline. We'll see you next week. Here is your underwear. <laughs> like, <laughs> where are these? <laughs> We've had a lot of really brilliant letters sent to us for our podcast, Dear Daughter. Some are funny, some are sad, some are inspiring, and some are moving. So it's a little bit of a rocky time for me, but times like these put it all in perspective. It's going to be all right, and we'll come out of it on the other end more appreciative of all we have, and that's a good thing. Between us, we are creating a handbook to life, so our daughters around the world can benefit from the things that we've learned. What I wanted to pass on to my future daughter is just embrace all of yourself. Dear Daughter, from the BBC World Service. By the time you get to my age, I want you to be able to decide what's best for you. Search for Dear Daughter, wherever you get your podcasts.